Hey, it's Dino at Digispin Crypto. Now, this is part two of our interview with Michael from Veriscoin. Veriscoin is a new speculative type of coin. Uh, the rewards are kind of great at the moment if you can get your hands on some by mining. And, you know, this is just uh, another good opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about a different cryptocurrency. We like to give everybody an opportunity uh, to talk about their projects and bring on Digit Spin Crypto. It's up to you to decide if it's something that works for you and if it's something that you want to get involved with. But at the same time, it's good to know how other coins are working so you can compare them to the coins that you invest into and you know what you're getting and, and why. So without further ado, let's get to part two of the Veris Coin uh, interview with Michael. it's doing is it's taking advantage of a um, circuitry that's inside of the processor that was built just to do the hash and so basically it is an ASIC inside of the processor a small piece of it so you don't you know, that, there's only the one of them but it's it's in there and it's actually performing so it, it uh, built, by the way just to, one it wasn't built just to do this hash the uh, the developers of Haraka V2 leveraged this instruction set that was actually developed for doing AES encryption to develop this uh, quantum secure short input hash, and then we use that core to develop our cryptocurrency hash algorithm. Okay, that that makes it. So tell me about. Um... I, I want to get into into some of the mining parts and everything, but tell me about the delayed proof of work um, functionality. Uh, just uh, just a quick paragraph or two. Uh, now, obviously, there's uh, there are light um, ways of doing it where you're not getting the whole chain and you're just working on a small subset and then sending back that information. Uh, but tell me about the, the 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 delayed proof of work. So, basically, you know, yes, you're right. There are light ways of doing it, and it's done through um, you know you can you could validate a specific block just through its block hash because the block hash of a block you know would be different if any block before it was different, and so by uh, by validating hashes of the specific information that gets notarized into Komodo, then you can prove that if you put the same information, meaning a block that is supposed to be that same block, into that hash and you don't, don't come out with exactly the same number, then something is different. And so basically that's what, it, that's what the delayed proof of work is doing, is it's setting up these checkpoints and it's making sure that at those checkpoints, there's a hash operation. That hash operation is then um, notarized through the elected notaries into Komodo, which you know you can't forge all of the electric or all of the elected notaries or even a, a percentage of the elected notaries public keys, which are then used on top of those um, hashes in order to ensure that what is in fact notarized into that chain is what it should be. And so the delayed proof of work is really, um, it's interesting because, you know, since ASICs kind of took over many of the algorithms, uh, there have been a lot of 51% attacks that we've seen, I would say in the last, you know, six months, especially. And, and a lot of, a number of coins have, have just said, okay, whether we started on Komodo or not, this is something we need. And so, um, I, I think the Komodo team should tell you who those are. I, I don't want to get the names wrong, but I know that, that there are some uh, coins that have moved over to using the Komodo delayed proof of work in order to prevent that 51% attack. And from our perspective, 
we've got you know an immediate uh, protection with the combination of the proof of stake and the proof of work. No matter how much hash power you put on the chain, um, the proof of stake is there taking 50% of the blocks as people win their stakes. And that's a different population of block validators than the miners. So you can put as much hash power as you want onto our chain and you're not going to exceed 50% of the blocks. But if somehow you figure out a way to do that, if you figure out a way to, you know, get through that first layer and beat the statistics and, and you end up figuring out how to, you know, create a chain that gets around this 50% proof of stake, then we've got delayed proof of work sitting there and it's going to stop you uh, at every checkpoint from inventing a history beyond that. So, um, you know, we believe the combination of these two is unprecedented security, but the delayed proof of work alone is a major step and a, and a, I'd say a big advance in what Komodo did. They had the foresight to do it. And then they had, as you mentioned, the foresight to get it uh, paid for for many years to come on the Bitcoin blockchain. Yeah. All right. It, basically, what it comes down to is that your environment is, is to protect itself is, is broken down so that people can mine the coin. People can put a whole bunch of them in their wallet and put it in staking mode and earn the coins. And, um, and obviously with the delayed proof of work. So all three of these things working together, kind of uh, check and balance each other and make sure that uh, you, you, you if it's just all proof of work, if you grab the 51%, you've, you've got it all, but you come up against a barrier and now you have a whole different set of puzzles you would have to solve to, to, to take over. And um, so obviously that adds to the, uh, to the level of uh, security for the environment and uh, pretty sharp stuff. Um, so I want to talk to you about this. Um, uh, let, me, let me bring this, let me slide you over here. Let's, let's bring up this little graphic. I, I saw this out there and this was talking about the Verus. I'm not sure if you could see that uh, where you are um, as well. But um, obviously this was just talking about the coin itself, uh, the launch date, which was in May. So obviously it was uh, not that long ago. So it says here that you have what, 84 million. That's gonna be the max supply? Absolutely the maximum over the lifetime of the coin. So um, I think right now it's a, right now it's a little over uh, 30 million is the total supply. And then every block, you know, there is some amount added to that. But then we have another factor, which other coins uh, haven't done before to our knowledge, which I think you've got that right down at in the green there. On your yes, screen. I'm gonna. I, I wanted to get to that part. I'm hoping that I can, uh, I can kind of corral you first. So I wanted to. Uh, I'll say one thing. Even though the total supply right now, if you look at the explorer, it's going to say the total supply is somewhere a little over 30 million. The actual circulating supply is probably closer to four million or somewhere in that range. I don't know exactly. Uh, right now, because I didn't do the calculations, but it's somewhere um, probably in the range of 4 million or so. Okay, so you have 4 million in circulation, and you're saying there's I, a total I supply in that range, and then a total total supply right now of a little over 30 million. I could look at the Explorer um, to see. So how does it get to this 83 million total supply? Over many, many years of coin emission, it, that is the level that it could never exceed, you know, hundreds of years into the future, basically. So isn't that considered then the total supply is 83 million and your circulation is that 4 million or whatever that is currently? Well, the, so if you look at something like Ethereum, um, what's its total supply? I you don't know, know that number. 
total supply number, which is effectively all of the Ethereum uh, that has been mined into existence, and it has an infinite max supply because there's no cap. Um, so, you know, max supply is max supply, and because we have the time locks, which, and, and maybe I really should mention that because it ties into why there's total supply, max supply, and why circulating is different. Um, a lot of the coins right now are time locked and they're releasing over the next two years because the way that the launch happened, this was all in the interest of fair launch as well as to create incentives for people who were in the early mining, not to just you know mine and dump the coins, but to actually mine and and help realize the vision and be part of the community and care about the project. And so, so the general um, release started like this. It, it was a slow, uh, a slow start, started at zero coins. For the first week, it went from zero up to 384. And then there were, um, there are these months as it is having down to 24, where it will sit actually for about two years and a month. And so this start from zero to 384, and then those first two months, every block, every block reward that was 192 or above was randomly time locked for unlocking between, I think it was last Tuesday it started, over the next two years. And so as people were mining and we were mining and the foundation was mining and lots of people in the community, you know, and around the world were mining, as they were mining in those two months, they were earning time-locked block rewards that would unlock for a random amount of time. So, you know, one might be unlocking this month, one might be unlocking in a year, in two months, one might be unlocking, you know, really in two years. And, um, and so that was something unique to our, to our emission schedule that we believed would really help create a community with an interest in building a successful community coin. And, you know, from the community that we built, which is just, it's the most helpful community that I've ever had the pleasure of working with when, you know, I, I think you may have uh, checked out the Discord. I'm not sure if you have, but I think you might have. Um, you know, you, you go to our Discord and people are nice to each other all around on all the channels and, and people are, you know, if people have questions then other people in the community jump in and, and help them figure it out. And, you know, I try to spend time there as well. And I, and I also have to um, write code and, and develop things for, you know, the next stage and the next stage um, and the next release. But, you know, we're right now, right now, we are in the last week of the 96 block rewards, which are the largest rewards that are not time locked. And we are at the... Um, you know, because the time lock started unlocking and we're at 96 block rewards through the end of, I think it's through Tuesday, this is the most supply that will be emitted to the market period in the history of the coin. And, you know, we have an exchange where people are trading, but we're not seeing like dumping and that was the goal. We wanted people to really care about the success of the project, to to really feel that they're a part of it. And there are there are miners and stakers on our Discord who are holding you know time lock rewards that will unlock over the next two years. And their goal is to really make the project successful, just as ours is, just as the foundation's is. And so I think it's helped a lot. It's a unique thing to Varus. Um, a lot of people liked it. Some people didn't want to mine time locked coins. So we said, okay, then wait until they're 96. They won't be time locked. Um, but a lot of people really liked it. And I think it's working well 
to create a very positive community dynamic around the project. Yeah, it's it's a clever clever way of going about it. I haven't seen this before. So basically, to make sure everybody understands out there, the folks that were mining that first uh, two months or uh, of the coin, um, just because you acquired the coin doesn't mean that you could go out and spend it. And so basically, it was uh, put in your wallet and, and told that you have it, but it wasn't transferable because it was locked up um until a certain timeline this way everybody didn't just mine all the major coins and then take it to an exchange and sell them you know for a lot less uh, so yeah no clever idea i'm glad you explained that and uh, that makes sense um, getting back to this total supply so am i misreading this this is not max supply this is uh, what i'm looking for that is, 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 that is max supply um the, the only reason that I made the distinction between max total and circulating right now is because since this infographic was made, people have asked to differentiate these things. And because we have this time lock factor, it's kind of important actually. And so- Okay. All right. So, all right, now let me stop. All right, now I get it. So we have our maximum supply of 83,000. Uh, we have a total supply, which includes uh, locked and unlocked coins. And then you have your circulating supply, which is just the unlocked coins. Thank you. Exactly. I got it. And I wanted to make sure everybody out there understood it, uh, why there was three numbers there. Good. All right. Let's see what else was on this little chart here. If I had any questions. Uh, transaction fee. All right. Mining algorithm. The Veris hash. That's the Mike's Verish ha Veris hash. All right. So I got all that good stuff. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. And so I, you know, I wanted to understand uh, this mining uh, emission curve. Uh, obviously, it's uh, going in half here. After the 24 block reward that goes on for two years, what happens then? <laughs> How, what does it go down to? Does it keep going in oh, half? It's half years. So uh, 24 for two years then, and then uh, having to 12 for two years, and then having to six for two years, and then having to three for two years, and then one and a half, and then uh, 0.75, and it just continues. All right. So but, those uh, that want to get into this uh, need to start uh, mining as soon as possible. <laughs> there's a very important thing that, that people should understand about Varus, which is another unique um, thing and that is we talked about it early on public blockchains as a service so when you run a poll if you're running the poll application using public blockchains as a service for example how will that work the way it'll work is you're going to run a poll by posting your poll transaction and there's going to be a going rate in Varus for running that poll and that going rate is going to include the provisioning of the blockchain that will run that poll and then get notarized of all the results back into Veris. So what that means is you're gonna post a transaction to run your poll. The miners and the stakers are going to pick up that transaction and using the smart contracts that will be built into the system at that point will provision the chain and they will make money that isn't in the block reward. It's not in transaction fees in return for provisioning that blockchain for you. So now, even though the block reward will be going in half over time, there will be an actual public blockchains as a service economy on the Verus blockchain and miners and stakers will be provisioning blockchains for applications and over time other services and they will be being paid more than just transaction fees and more than just block rewards and so as the block rewards go down lower and lower it will convert into basically a service economy where miners and stakers are providing necessary services for the decentralized applications that run in the system. All right, I I get it. Um, it's, it's producing uh, you know an income stream. 
is uh, does the environment take a little trim off the top and forward that to the uh, to the foundation or is it uh, all going to the folks that are, are mining and staking no no everything about uh, Veris coin is what it looks like on the surface as far as you know we've been we've been as upfront and open as we can about how things work there's no there's no fee off the top for any foundation because there is no central organization that is set up to take anything out of the process it just started fair and and so there is no uh founders reward coming out of every block and there's no um you know there's nothing off the top that's intended to go to the foundation it's public blockchains as a service and and the miners and stakers just like today you know the miners in bitcoin are mining this public bitcoin chain the miners and stakers mining Varus coin or mining this public Varus coin chain and they are the people putting in either their stakeholdings you know which is capital or their work which is mining and they are 50 percent you know capital and 50 percent um, labor putting in their efforts to provision the uh, services that that Varus coin needs to run and they are the ones who get the totality of all of the rewards for doing that. Perfect. Perfect. I, I had to ask the question. Just want to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page. Um, yeah, we're in that way. And so I appreciate it. Okay. Now the wallet that's currently existing, uh, obviously uh, you, if you have your various coins in there, you set the, um, the amount of threads to be used to zero. It puts it in a staking mode. Do I have to have a minimum amount? let's say i got 96 veris coins and i put them in there uh those will stake obviously the reward will be small but um will those stake is there a minimum amount there there is no minimum amount for staking i mean you could you could stake with one satoshi which is basically one 100 millionth of a coin um your chances of getting a stake are proportional every block uh, and, and for staking, you would calculate uh, 720 uh, likely blocks a day. Your your um, chances of getting a staked block is proportional to the stake you hold and are staking on the network relative to the stake other people hold and are staking on the network. So, um, right. So this basically comes down to. It's not like it's a winner take all. So if some guy has fifty percent of all the coins and he's going to get them all, it will get shared proportionally uh, across all of the stakeholders. Is that a fair way of saying it? The the, the proof of stake is also a, a fair statistical algorithm, and the way that it works is, um, it's actually it's our own algorithm, and it's uh, it's similar in a way to um, to proof of work in that. There is a hash. It actually uses Varus hash, and there is a difficulty, and you want to get a hash number that comes in below the difficulty. And the more people are staking, the harder the difficulty becomes, the harder the target is to meet. But the difference between proof of stake and proof of work is how you arrive at that hash. In proof of work, you're basically taking the um, information of the block you would like to add to the chain, and you're running through, you know, as many possibilities as you can to generate a little bit different um, number, which generates a completely different hash every time. And you're testing that against the target. And if you are lower than the target, then you can submit your block. And if someone else didn't do it at exactly the same time and they didn't happen to win, then you'll get the block. Same with proof of stake, but your hash result is determined by things that you can't change. You can't change the hash result um, when you're determining it to see if you've won. It's dependent on pre-existing transactions that you have and pre-existing holdings that you have, and you don't really get to modify the results, 
You just get to try again if you didn't win a block this time. And so it's a statistical contest that's weighted by the amount of coins that you hold. But statistics are statistics. And it is possible that someone who is just holding, you know, one Satoshi could conceivably win a block. Um, it's just extremely, extremely unlikely that that would happen in your lifetime or mine probably all right all right that, that, that makes sense so let me uh get on to a couple of things i know we have a lot of good stuff that we talked about today but um i do want to talk about uh we did the time lock we did the uh the gpu the mining cloud i i, I wanted to take a look i i went installed the wallet uh got everything downloaded the chain did all the good stuff um uh, and obviously reading into it found out that you know there's so many folks that have been so excited about it that uh, the chances of winning it solo especially on a ryzen 5 are going to be pretty thin and uh that there was a pool obviously uh the official wallet doesn't have the ability to direct it to a pool so you have to then run a uh, a separate piece of software uh, that would execute against the CPU, um, put it into a pool, and if it wins, it then sends the money over to your wallet. Now, uh, I took a look. I saw there was a couple of, uh, there was like a Genesis uh, site. There was a, let's take a look here. There was um, doo -doo -doo -doo, the Veris coin mining pool is mining pools cloud Veris the uh, Veris coin mining pools cloud and I took a look and uh, you know look pretty sharp here I, I went to the help uh, section and wanted to download the the mining tool and it took me over to uh, a gentleman that had modified a, a, an open source project uh, added to it and uh, couldn't find a, 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 a Windows EXE. Now, they had a Windows and a, and a Linux version, and I, and I took a look at the Windows version. Uh, went there, I couldn't find a release uh, for an executable of any type. And it had all the code and everything, and it gave you instructions on how to compile it and you know what, what additional libraries you needed and all this other stuff. And I went, I don't have time for this. I don't have time. I'm looking for an EXE that I can run set the address set the my you know the cloud and go to town and this way i can put it on 20 or 30 computers and and let it run but um i i struck out and i'm wondering if i did not pay attention um or it doesn't exist yet and what's your thoughts on uh, is there going to be a you think somebody will put together it's not that it's your responsibility but uh do you did you hear anything out there of any of the community members trying to create a a downloadable uh, standalone executable okay so um so first i should i should say there are as far as i know i know of uh four pools that that have linked to our discord um you're on one of them there's also uh luckpool.net slash varus there's uh vrsc.genasys uh, mining, and I think it's a G I N A uh, S I S. There, then there's uh, varuspool.xyz, and then you, I think you're on uh, miningpools.cloud. And so, I know that. So there are mining uh, programs that are compiled. Um, they've been made. The Windows Miner was made available by a community member. And you can download the Windows Miner from, I thought it was at all pools, um, but there might be a pool that you've seen that doesn't have a download of the binary. But because you brought this up, I'm going to go make sure after we finish here that uh, that there is an easily downloadable binary for everyone. <laughs> so, um, so right now, I think you can, I know you can download the binary for Windows or for Linux, uh, from at least three or three out of four of the pools, and I thought it was four, but might not be. So I'll just go back and I'll make sure that there's an easily accessible 
um, miner for Windows and Linux available to everybody um, just to make that easy to do. So thanks yeah, for that, letting that, me know. Yeah, that would help out. Um, I did. I, I went to the second one, which is the Genesis, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it. And I saw that, uh, hey, if you have Windows, sorry, you have Windows, but uh, here's a miner for you. I didn't get a chance to <laughs> click on the button and uh, see where it took me. Um, and I, that was the next thing. I just literally ran out of time. Uh, but I wanted to uh, put this on a couple of uh, Ryzen 5s just to see what happens and, and uh, take a look at it. Uh, I'd like to experience every project that I, uh, I talk with and um so that i i have i can hash rate is dude I'm, I'm sorry i'd love to hear what your hash rate is on your ryzen fives sure sure as soon as i get that um now that we have the a means of communicating i can uh, telegram you and uh, what have you and i'll give you any of that feedback um you know i'm kind of excited to to put a, a few machines on it just to see uh, where it takes me uh, especially now where the going is good and you too should do that uh, out there if you have an opportunity uh, get yourself um, uh, some some coins uh, while you can it's it's just the time to do it and uh, before everything takes off and it just adds more to the value gets you involved and and maybe you'll see some additional uh, capabilities uh, coming down I mean so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing, and Thank you. I like all of the stuff. And quite frankly, you're a, a, a you know real smart guy. Obviously, you know what you're doing. You've been around as long as I have, and uh, far more in depth uh, than I probably have ever gone. And uh, so I, I have no doubts. But I, I do want to pick on you guys on on, the, on a couple of little things, and then I want to talk about the roadmap. Um, right. One of the things I wanted to pick on, and when, when the guys came and they said, take a look at the Veris, so the first thing I do is I go to the website. And, you know, I'm not looking for scrolling things and little wispy stuff, and I could care less. I need some meat and potatoes. I personally, when I do a website, let's move you back over here. When I take a look at a site, I go to it, and the first first thing I do is, is all right, you know, all right, I, I, I see some tech, some vision, I got the white paper, I don't have time to go through all of those white papers, I'll take a, a glance through it maybe, uh, I see some, some cool tech going on here, I see X is good, I got a way to get a wallet set up, uh, and mine, where to go to go, you know, buy it on an exchange, um, I see some names, so when I take a look at this, uh, I do what's called the uh, a trade show walk by, so I don't know if, you, if you've been to trade shows. And when you go to a trade show, there's just you know hundreds and hundreds of booths. You're going down the aisles, and you're as you're you're walking along, you're looking at the booths, and and you know you're looking at the pictures and and see if there's something there that strikes your fancy that makes you want to stop and ask more questions. And uh, when I did my trade show walk by of the website. I have no idea what's so special about this coin. I had no idea of everything that you and me just talked about. And there was nothing there that made me want to look further. And the things that concerned me right off the bat was is that um, I had no idea what this coin was about. All right, there's another cryptocurrency. All right, okay. Um, you know, and so I didn't know what you were trying to solve. Uh, just a little blurb, uh, you know, I would have liked to have seen a little blurb that said, this is what we're solving, this is why this coin is, so that I can catch my attention right off the bat. This is my personal right. opinion. Take your, I, I'm just a crazy guy yeah. in a straw hat, and, uh, you, you know, from there. So it didn't lend me I, to want I, to I dig deeper. I, no, I completely accept the feedback, and I think, uh, you know, it's valid feedback and and I think based on this um, we probably should it's probably time for an update of that site so I think you know we'll well I we'll think it's cheating that. you I think it's cheating you because no, based on everything that we're talking about 
there's so much yeah. more and there's so much going on with with your project that you're that you're developing for that um uh that i wasn't able to um to find easily it should be really super easy for me so that i say hey i think i'd be interested in in this and, and let me look more and there was nothing that me and uh, <laughs> and things now can I, and can one I of the you, things in defense of in defense being trying not to be defensive but also still defending um of the reasons for why it looks the way it does so from the beginning and throughout the whole project our philosophy has been we want to build the vision not just sell the vision and so the i think you're i think at this point at the stage of the project we should take your advice and we should do what you're saying um when we put this together and and when this was put together and and it says what it says it really was an effort to say what is it now what do you get today right now and the vision was okay and if you want to know about more then you can click here and and i think you're right it, it probably short changes the project right now um because it doesn't lead you to wanting to really understand the vision which uh, I, I think is a huge and very important vision yeah I, I think you're right on target there um you know as uh you know i'm a ceo of a company and my time is so limited that you know if i don't get the bullet point right off the bat so i, I all right that's nice you know like looking at resumes as you go through uh, to next next until you see something on there and then you start to look more um my only feedback is is that if you know you talk right off the front is to talk about what the what it's solving and then i can dig in you know and go in in yeah. a little bit deeper um just just my throw up the uh, idea um to try to gra let people grasp a little bit more because you if you're into technical stuff you know you're not going to have a problem with this and you're gonna you know if you know this is something you want to get involved with you're gonna search through it and find what you need that's what we do we're used to that but the average joe who wants to get involved right. with this that they, they're not going to know so that's my suggestion there my only other oh. suggestion as i'm looking for and i'm going through this here is uh to have a a real clear uh some click throughs um that can give you more details in other words i had a hard time you know obviously the, you have discord i don't i don't i use telegram all these i don't have time to add more programs and stuff so i don't even bother i mean i clicked on it and i don't even know how to use the discord i don't even get involved with it but um you know uh, the ability to find your m a m a your uh your and i mean uh, on, Bit on bitcoin talk your uh even simple things as this i happened to dig around and i found ben's pocket guide for various coin oh yeah that's this, a great yeah you need to put a link you this is what the coin's about this is how we're going to get there and you need to click right. this to see the, to, to get a little bit more about what this is about this after i read this i went huh this is not bad this is not bad i really need that and so then i started because of ben what he wrote here for you guys i started to uh uh to download the wallet and to, to, to get more information and if you can either link to it or find a way to put it into your website this would i think bring a lot more attention to your coin uh, as you go forward we will make changes and we'll do uh we'll do these things i think your feedback is on target i appreciate it yeah I, i'd like to see you guys do well and i think there's a lot more to your project than meets the eye and it's all hidden uh, until i found well, we this article yeah so that was my only uh, and the last part that and the reason and this is because when i went to do a review when I, and anybody else wants me to review their coin if i can't find the information 
as an average Joe and, and go through the, your review is not going to be good because I can't find the information easily. And um, so yep. one of the things, you know, I was looking at the, the contributors and w one of the things that obviously, um, and as somebody who doesn't know anything about it, they look at it and they see names, they see information and they have no idea if this is actually the person. You know as well as I do, there's so many people out there playing games and, and who are not forthright. Obviously, that's the reason why I wanted you on here, that Michael does exist. He's sitting right there in the screen above me. All right. So the person does exist. It, 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 but, you know, people don't know. And, and you know, if, if you had, um, whether or not you guys want to put your picture out there, so there's a face to it. Maybe you have a, a click to your link. You, you know, most people have a LinkedIn, especially uh, if they've been in the business before so that i can look at it i can click at it that's the same guy this is what he does these guys obviously are real they they know what they're doing so you know let me get a little bit more involved my feedback to you these are the things i do as a reviewer uh, when i take a look at it. if i can't find the information easily i'm i'm you know i don't have the time to dig through it and unless somebody says you need to go check out this coin and you need to get some of these in your pocket then obviously i'm gonna I'll dig around as much as I need to to find the information. But if you're trying to bring in people uh, easily, these are the types of things that I looked for. And I, and if you see see any value in it, maybe you can uh, add it. To... Thank you. So that that was my only feedback for the website, and the reason why I didn't even look further into Verus is because it, you gave me no reason to, um, or the the Verus, not you, Michael, but the Verus no, no, project. I, I understand your point, and I and I do appreciate the feedback, really. Okay, good, good, and uh, so I'm 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 hopefully the the project will be able to do something more excited. Uh, more d direct and then you'll be able to capture more people because I think you deserve that and um, there's, there's more there to it so yeah um, I'm gonna put the link uh, below on Ben's article here so if you guys want to learn uh, more about Varus um, there's obviously a lot more to this project than than meets the eye if you're just skimming so you definitely want to take a look I'm gonna put some links down below and you can click through them, take a look at it. Yeah, absolutely, at a minimum, want to click on Ben's, uh, Ben, who is from uh, Komodo, and uh, click on his link, and he talks about uh, Varus coin and, and the basics about it. And this is a, a short read, but you know it's just packed full of meat and potatoes, and actually can get you pretty excited about the project. I was not excited until I read this, and I'm going to be honest with you, and until I got a chance to meet Michael right here over my shoulder, um, real personable, and uh, we're thrilled to have him. So make sure you, you take a look at this. It's important uh, to do, and then you can make a decision whether or not this is something you want to mine or get involved with. You know, so Michael. So thank you, this, thanks for, thanks so much, because I think what you're telling us is, we're in best kept secret mode and we shouldn't be in that mode. And I think that's true. Thank you. Well, maybe that's where they want to be. I don't know. Maybe that's where the community <laughs> wants to be for at least the first that's few months. I, I, yeah. You know, that happens, you know, but um, when the time is right and you really want people to understand what's going on, I, um, I'm curious to know on, on a personal level here is uh, what the, uh, there are so many projects, Michael, out there. I, I I go on the Telegram and they have the the announcements for new coins and thousands. And every time I turn around, there's just more coins. You know, one to store your garbage, one to pick up your you know lawn mowing services coins, and there's coins for everything and projects and a lot more of them. The time for just a currency coin is going to be really tough on people. Obviously, yeah. having some kind of specialty nature of of your of your project is going to give you a better edge. And yours being uh, quite a secure and robust environment, uh, along with the ability to, uh, uh, to to work with Komodo using the Komodo template system and um, 
and and then these uh, services uh, applications as a service blockchain applications as a service so how do you see yourself i mean i know obviously it's a biased uh, question to ask you but the who are your biggest competitors and uh, how do you see yourselves uh, catching up to them or beating them that's a that's a good question because actually it's not the first time we've been asked and uh you know it's a it's a process of decentralization so when i was cto at parallels we were um we were working with service providers and telcos to provide them with systems that would allow them to provision applications for a fee to their customers and provisioning uh, blockchains right now that's that's a hard thing to do for people um, so you'll have you know you'll have companies that will help other companies provision blockchains and you know, you have IBM with Hyperledger and you have Chainzilla um, leveraging the Komodo ecosystem. And, and uh, you know, these are like for bespoke, you know, custom um, blockchains and solutions for things. This can make a lot of sense. But, you know, Bitcoin came along and said, we can do transactions with something that carries value, cryptocurrency, money. We can do transactions without any central organization or entity at all. And everybody started doing transactions this way over some years. It took a few years for people you know, to really catch on. And, and now I think everyone accepts that cryptocurrency is part of the future. And the question is, well, what does that mean? So what we're doing is we're saying a lot of the things that you would um, today go and hire a consulting company for and put together, you know, like a poll, you know, if you go and you want to have a company, um, you know, people have said, Oh, votes, this is potentially a competitor. Uh, but votes does polls and they're more of an application and, and the, and the polling application is really going to be an application on top of public blockchains as a service. There hasn't been public blockchains as a service before. There just isn't such a thing. And so is there a competitor of that? There's not a competitor of that. That is the um, public blockchains as a service is the disruptive technology that we're bringing to the table, actually. And what that is, is it leverages the security that we're bringing to the table and the hash algorithm, all these different things. But public blockchains as a service is a paradigm shift, really. It's going to enable um, companies and organizations and groups of people or just people to not have to go and get custom blockchains provision just because they need the benefit of their own isolated blockchain. They'll just be able to run an application that just does that for them and they don't even have to think about it. You know, so over time we expect polling to be just something that is an application that, you know, you'd get from the iTunes store or you'd have on your Android and you'd be using it on your phone. And yeah, it might create a blockchain in the background and you might be running on an isolated blockchain and the, and the person who did that application um, or all the people using it will collectively be paying the miners and stakers to make all that happen. But all you really are thinking about is that you're using a poll on your phone and it all works and you get your privacy and you get to even later on see that all the results are valid and you could even audit them with the app itself and you can see that your vote is right there and it was counted and nobody else can you know and so so the idea is uh, of public blockchains as a service we're not really seeing people are doing that so our, com our competition is kind of the old way that people provision and provide services. And we believe this is really a disruptive approach more than it is um, a copy of what someone else is doing with cryptocurrency. And it's going beyond the idea of transactions or basic D applications and saying, you know, the blockchain itself can be provisioned 
and operated the way transactions are done in Bitcoin today. All right, that makes sense. I appreciate that feedback because I was curious. Um, and most folks are, or most of the coins are creating apps that will actually run on their environments, but I don't believe that they're going to be uh, as services uh, as the same way that you're doing it. Um, and, and, uh, now, so for somebody to be able to take advantage or to use the environment, is there going to be like a, a developer kit or some kind of a um, <clears throat> set so of we'll instructions that you can... That Sorry, that'll be made available uh, so that you could just, you know, you download your set of instructions that are available to you and you can just start writing code to uh, to access this. Uh, or do they have to really get involved with your project and start to know what you did soup to nuts before they can actually make something happen? If someone's going to develop applications, um, then, you know, we're starting with everything as open source. So everything we do is completely open source and available to everybody, you know, to everybody to work on. Um, our, it's one of the reasons that we feel it's not enough to just say, okay, we've got public blockchains as a service. Here's the protocol. You can make a blockchain. Okay, now everybody can just go and make your applications. We actually have, you know, the whole idea of doing this came out of the desire to solve certain problems. And in fact, the foundational applications are applications that we want to build on the way to, you know, even a bigger and broader vision of public services as public systems that work on behalf of the people. And so, um, so the general idea is something that right now describe when we actually release the public blockchains as a service, um, you know, we're going to be building some of the first applications on that. If there are other people who want to build applications, I can't say, I know that everything's going to be open source. I know that we've got a community that's very interested in making things as easy as possible for people to use. And so are we. Um, but as soon as we finish the uh, public blockchains as a service technologies, then we're going to be building the foundational applications on top of that. And it might be that the really easy to follow, easy to use, you know, developer's guide and developer's kit is something that you'd be more likely to see after the first uh, polls, say, or foundational applications. Um, there will certainly be tools and there will certainly be examples that are real applications. Uh, Doing a software development kit is not our first priority because we want to make the applications that leverage the technology to make the whole system useful for people who aren't just developers. All right, that makes sense. Uh, I was just curious how we were going to bring, hey, you two can play with the blockchain and uh, make something. And, <laughs> and what do I start? No, you know, and, and uh, yeah. so there will be curious. There will be applications developers building technologies and building applications on this. I'm, I'm sure of it. But we expect that the first applications that the really first decentralized applications, aside from the currency aspects and the wallet and mining and staking and, and tools around that. And, and we have messaging, actually. We have the, the um, zero knowledge uh, private but permanent blockchain messaging already in the wallet. Aside from those things, we think that easy to use and fun to use uh, polls and support for elections will be one of the first applications that people will really be able to use on the system. And at that point, it will also be a completely open source example for anybody who wants to um, make a better one, make a different one, or use it as an example to make something that they have a vision of doing. All right, all right, I'll go with you. Now, I, I was looking, I was noticing that like in phase two, you were talking about auto chains, poles, and Veris Mobile. Um, let's see here, phase three, identity and proof of virtue. 
phase four integrated machine learning so um, and content and storage so let, uh, obviously as you go along you want to create and do bigger and better things so um, what is the just just a couple of sentences what is auto chains and Verus mobile okay so uh, Verus so we actually believe that um, a mobile experience is critical so Verus mobile is is you know first and foremost just having your Verus wallet on your mobile device and that's something that um, is in phase two it's something that we're going to have available in phase two hopefully in the not too distant future um the uh auto chains are public blockchains as a service so another way to refer to uh public blockchains as a service so these are um blockchains that are automatically provisioned and created they might only live for the length of the duration of a particular poll or or an election and then they might get archived and, and notarized back into Verus, and the blockchain itself may not need to um, exist beyond that as part of the application. So we call those uh, auto chains. And because we believe that, you know, if we just release technology, then that's only going to be useful for a small subset of the population. We believe that those technologies are needed for us to really do what we want to do with polls and elections. And so using polls and elections over those technologies on your mobile device is, is definitely something that we want to enable. And we want to enable, you know, my mom or uh, brothers and sisters who aren't uh, developers to be able to use this to vote on whether they like cats or dogs more or to vote on uh, you know, a political issue or a, or a candidate for, for something, at least in a poll or, or in actual elections. And, um, you know, then you talked about the next phases. And, uh, and maybe if I could just touch on one of the things that actually got me thinking about all of this to begin with. Um, I was doing a lot of machine learning uh, work and and consulting in machine learning for people and building um, systems that would you know, read and they would read uh, messages and text and email and documents and you could train them to classify those things uh, into whatever types of categories you decided to train them in. Um, I think I, I posted a link to one of my uh, machine learning repositories because people were interested in, in reducing uh, some of that, you know, ETH scam giveaway spam on Twitter. And, and, uh, and so one of the repositories I made can basically take any text and any kind of training information and it reads the text and, and you can train it to categorize um, you know, you could train it to categorize tweets. There are actually examples in the repository of doing that. You can train it to categorize who an author is. You can train it to categorize the sentiment of something. You could train it to categorize if the speech was toxic based on certain standards, these kinds of things. And the idea that we could, over time, run polls that would respect the privacy of the people who engage with them. So it's not like uh, Facebook or a centralized social network where everything you do and say, someone else is keeping that data. It's you get to actually preserve your dignity. You get to preserve your privacy and you get to tell someone what you think. And that gets to be recorded without actually recording all of, you know, what you had for breakfast and, and, and what you happen to be wearing today, you know? And I mean, one of, my, one of my past roles was I was the technical fellow for Microsoft's advertising platform using machine learning technologies and, and figuring out, you know, how to learn more about people by their behaviors <clears throat> so that that could be used, you know, to sell more advertising. And, and just working in that environment, you realize 
people really don't understand how much they are exposing about themselves when they use all of these centralized services that are designed to capture every bit of information about them that's possible. And so this is intended to be a better way. You know, the idea is that we actually, there's a lot that we could learn from people, from populations that are not afraid to speak their mind because they're protected by technology that's guaranteed to preserve their confidentiality. Imagine that, you know, imagine that you could, that you're not, you're not using technology <laughs> to get everything that is yourself. You're using the technology that actually protects your privacy, but still allows you to speak your mind. And so that's actually something that we're not seeing anyone else do. And that's what gets me excited about the project at the fundamental level. And, you know, when I talk about machine learning in phase four, you know, we got to go through, we got to go through important phase one, which we've already done and phase two, which we're doing now and phase three to get to phase four. And if I only talk about what I believe phase four can enable to help, you know, society and humans and everything else, nobody's going to understand anything I'm saying. It's just going to, you know, because you got to get the other phases to be there. And so, um, so this is, you know, a step-by-step -step approach that we've laid out that leads us to um, what I believe is a way of really leveraging machine learning while being able to expose the world's intelligence to help machines learn about people too, without any individual being at risk of exposing too much about themselves to the system and being a target of anything. All right. Makes sense, and I appreciate you explaining uh, your position on that. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. Well, um, unless I missed something, is there anything that you wanted to add uh, that, uh, that you think that I missed uh, in my questions that I didn't do a good job at? Or I, I just want to say I really appreciate uh, this interview because you've, you've uh, touched on so many important issues and and I appreciate the chance to talk about them and even the, you know, the, the opportunity to think a little bit further about what we're doing all this for. Um, I really appreciate it. And if there is anything that we missed for this, I'm, I'm not thinking about what it is right now. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll but bring we'll bring you, you back on if you have, if you, if you got new stuff. Uh, you know, that won't be a problem. Um, what I uh, I wanted to tell you is that, that uh, you've been an awesome guest. I appreciate uh, you, you, you taking the time out of your schedule. Uh, it felt like I was hanging out with some, some of my old code developers that I used to work with. And, uh, and I had a, a real enjoyable time talking with you uh, about everything. Um, there's no doubt in my heart that you're going to have a lot of competition. Um, to be able to break through because there's so much out there but i think that uh, yeah you have some solid people you have um, the the actual performance of your environment i think is rock solid and that's a, a real big and a good start and um, as you go along as long as um, you can have something to do uh, with these uh, these uh, decent uh, these uh, services uh, as a you know service as a service <laughs> blockchain as a service uh, type of solutions so that it actually um, um, will provide a value to somebody besides just mining another coin um, I think that you guys will do real well I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on you um, absolutely and i will be personally putting a machine or two on various just to see uh, some kind of results and and uh and uh, start mining a few coins and we'll see where you guys take this project and i hope that you'll keep me in mind to update me uh, in the future and you won't forget about me uh, when you become a big coin <laughs> and you're doing the awesome stuff thank you and it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you and i appreciate the time thank you very much Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Let's give him a hand of applause and uh, we'll talk to you.
So that was a lot of good information. There was a lot packed into two hours. And it's unbelievable how fast it went by. It was an enjoyable conversation. And believe it or not, we actually spent another half hour chatting about cryptocurrencies in general after we did the interview. So uh, Mike was a, a very personable uh, person. And uh, we hope to be able to connect with him again in the future. Now, we hope his project does well. And uh, hopefully they'll do a little bit more marketing. Now, keep in mind, I have uh, put uh, the mining software on one of my PCs just to uh, take a look. They're kind of in a ugly duckling phase where it's too hard to go solo mining, but yet the software is just starting to come out to mine in a pool. So there are one or two that you can download the software and start mining, but getting your hands on them is pretty tough. Uh, there's a lot of hash power out there, like he said, and there's a lot of folks mining Varus, so uh, getting hold of them seems to be tough. I'm going to let uh, my miner run for a few days and see what kind of results I get. I have no idea how to measure the, its value at this point. I don't believe they're on an exchange. I could be wrong, but I, I have not been able to find one. And uh, so, you know, these guys are starting from ground up and from scratch. But uh, I'll let you know how that turns out, along with uh, providing some information on how to set up a miner on your PC if you decide to invest some of your time and energy into Veriscoin. Either way, we wish Michael a lot of luck and hopefully uh, we'll get more information. Now keep in mind, we have a Telegram channel, uh, the Digispin Telegram, and we currently have uh, a team member from WebDollar. Michael has accepted our offer um, to join Digit Spin Crypto uh, Telegram and he will put uh, information out there every once in a while, news and tidbits. Chances are you may find out information about Veriscoin first on Digit Spin Crypto. So you may want to take a look at that as you go along. So we appreciate you coming here. If you enjoyed this series, give it a like and a subscription. And we will see you next time. Thanks.